because I've had to start writing it down. Um, welcome back. Thanks for watching. Um, oh, anyway, all right, let me start again. Okay, this is it. So what's happening with Amber? Adam is doing the painstaking job after he synced all the rushes together. So that means basically matching sound clips with video clips for every single take that was shot. Um, so now he's started actually sort of bolting the scenes together. Then we go through the process of more finely refining it, keep refining it, keep refining it until we've got a finished film. And then obviously we do all the other post-production stuff. There's not really much I can do at this stage because normally what would happen, especially if it was like on a sort of a longer form TV show or a film, the editor would be doing this assembly process. He'd be doing it or she'd be doing it while the director was filming. But we just blitzed it and we gave Adam um, all the footage at the end. There's part of me that wants to see stuff and there's another part of me that's just like, no, because in my mind it's perfect. <laughs> so uh, sometimes, sometimes seeing stuff can be like, oh, I thought I was brilliant. Um, all right, so that's what's going on. So there's not really much to report back on that. I keep the Facebook page active. We've got loads of beautifully shot um, production stills, which as I say, our production photographer, Greg, took. So I post those up on our Facebook page. Here's the uh, link to our Facebook page. And so the other thing on the Amber front is that we need some deadlines, basically. We know we need to know what time frame we're working to. So I went basically through all the top festivals that I would love to get into, found out when their entry opens for submissions, when it closes, where when early submission is so we can get stuff in for that. Um, save ourselves a bit of money because they charge different amounts depending on you know whether you're early mid submission or you get a late submission obviously late submission is the most expensive don't want to do that so if I know when those big festivals are when the submissions are open we can just get in straight away but the only problem is we don't want to be sending them too early a work in progress type of version of it do you know what I mean like we don't want to send one that's just like me going well what would happen here is you can tell them that what you're sending them is work in progress but at the end of the day like the, the viewers the screeners haven't got time to just go well I can imagine you know this green screen is going to be replaced with sweeping uh, you know vistas of uh, you know I don't know wherever so it's a balance between you know making sure that we're sending the best version we can and saving money on you know when we put the submissions in so that's what I'm doing at the moment <laughs> It's been a really fun week, like really interesting different things. So I did the Etheria photo shoot last week, which you saw. And then the uh, film festival was actually uh, on Saturday. So I went to that and that was a lot of fun. It was really inspiring to be reminded that female filmmaker isn't a genre or female films isn't a genre. It's just happens to have a woman at the helm instead of a man. Like these women were doing all kinds of different types of stuff. So I was really inspired to sort of just, you know, follow my path and not feel like, oh, I've got to talk about periods. <sighs> you know what I mean? We had a rehearsal for Diapause, you know I'm in pre-production on this uh, comedy short. So uh, we've cast this character who's kind of the roommate, <laughs> the roommate, like I've never known a superhero with a flatmate, but 
this is Dope Paul. And uh, yeah, so we had a rehearsal with him and he was like really chilled and funny and just perfect for the role. So that was really good to do that. I went to a talk as well about sort of YouTubing because obviously I'm kind of new to this. There's some people that have been doing it years. It was good to sort of get some tips about how people do it, about basically everything comes down to just do what feels right for you. Because I think when you start something, the temptation is to do what everybody else is doing because it, it's working for them. And you think, well, if that's what works, then that's what I'll do. But you've got to do what works for you. So that's my plan. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just going to just keep going and if people are watching it then maybe that's the right I'm on the right path and if not I don't know. I have to get changed because we've got a meeting for Dipole. Okay, ready. So, we're going to go and meet Christian who uh, hopefully is going to be our new DP for Dipole because we lost our last one. Actually, I don't have to jump and just walk. Okay, we're 37 minutes away. Christian, we're outside now. He's like really experienced, he's got his own kit. So that's very, very helpful because um, indie filmmakers making very small projects, it's such a blessing to find people that have got their own kit. And he's like made loads and loads of music videos. And I think that's kind of the vibe that we're going for. So we went and met him, talked through the project, and then we're gonna go and recce with him on Tuesday. Yeah, so that means um, that means going to the locations with him, talking through shots and stuff like that. I've got to do a shot list. God, this is the bane of my life on Amber, and now I'm just in the same boat again where I haven't even started doing it. I've got to start doing it. I started a writing course. This guy is amazing. I love everything he talks about. Basically, this guy is talking about how, you know how like there's all these books like Save the Cat and Story and you know, uh, John Truby type books. There's loads and loads of these books. And some people say they're amazing and some people say these guys are just cashing in on writers. I don't know. I think there's good things in the books, but I think that some of them or some parts of them are based on a model for, for films uh, filmmaking and screenwriting that doesn't exist anymore. So I really like this guy whose class I'm in because he's talking about you you don't do the structure like a, a one-size-fits-all structure for your screenwriting or your storytelling. You create the structure based on the type of story that you're trying to tell. I was gonna say that's simpler than it sounds but it didn't sound simple but you know so that but that changes everything when you think of like structure like that, rather than thinking, oh, this is supposed to happen at this point. This is a bit esoteric, right? But you know, when you're writing scripts, people, some people try to say that certain things should happen at certain times. There should be an inciting moment at a certain time. There should be a, um, a, a, a break at a certain point. There should be um, a dark night of the soul at a certain point where things all go wrong for your hero, all that sort of stuff. Well, this guy was saying, whatevs. He's, he's basically saying, Right, create, you create the structure at the same time as you're creating the story. So that's what makes a story amazing and unique. He's basically trying to teach people to write as good as Vince Gilligan, who created Breaking Bad, as good as uh, Matthew Weiner, who created um, Mad Men, and you know, all these amazing sort of series that people just go, I've never seen anything like this before. The really original, brilliant stuff. Who doesn't want to be able to write that? If for nothing else, those guys are fucking millionaires. And then lastly, I went to uh, the BAFTA US Student Awards with my good buddy Tom, and we had a really fun night. Oh, so the class is still going on. I've had to take the computer next door because I've got to get changed because my friend Tom is coming and we're going to the uh, BAFTA Student Awards. All right, so um, yeah, I'm going to take you with me. <laughs> Here we are, um, BAFTA US Student Awards, BAFTA Student, ba wait, BAFTA US Student Film Awards. Wow. 
we're just waiting to find out who won. There were eight films that were amazing. Um, God, they got high production values. I was looking at these films just thinking these could be, these look epic and they already look like feature films. It does make you think like film school actually might be worth it. <laughs> Yeah, just really nice night. Got to uh, do a little bit on the red carpet, if you don't mind. Um, I didn't do that on the red carpet. That would have been weird. Um, although I was a bit shy. I didn't want to go on. And then I suddenly lost my shy. And I was just like, <laughs> I didn't do that either. Um, anyways, so that's pretty much it.